God bless your family. This is Pastor Larry. And as we always say, this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. want to say God bless you and welcome you all to this Friday night edition of Moments in the Word. As always, I'm your host, Pastor Larry. Listen, we have an exciting lesson for you on tonight. Man, you picked the right night to be on tonight. Man, it is going to be epic. I got, I got a very, very special guest in the room that we'll bring on as soon as we come back. Listen, I want you to do three things for me. Number one, like our page. All right. If you like our page, listen, we get into the rotation. And the more you like our page, the more folks, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the more we come up in the rotation. All right. On YouTube and on Facebook. And so you like us, we'll be there. Glory to God. And maybe somebody else will uh, get to see this lesson and have their lives changed for the better. Also, share our page. Invite someone else into tonight's conversation. I believe it will change their life for the better. And then, as always, subscribe to our page. And every time we come on with some fresh content, it will not notify your device that we're on. And then guess what? You get to be a part of that lesson on that particular evening. All right? And so, again, please like. Please share and subscribe to our page. Listen, stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, all right, family, welcome back. And as always, we want to welcome you all to the place where change begins. We are changing lives that will ultimately impact the world. I want to say God bless to all of our e-churches and all the outlets that are tuned in right now. Many of you are on Facebook. Some of you are, are on YouTube. Others of you are, are on Periscope and other outlets that we have going. I want to say God bless you and thank you all for being a part of Moments in the Word, our Friday night edition. All right, listen, I want to connect with you. 
want you to take the time to shoot me an email at momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. That's momentsintheword99 at gmail.com. I love to hear from you. As always, listen, if something you want to discuss and have discussed, shoot me an email. There is no subject that is off limits, whatever it is. Shoot me an email. Maybe there is, is, is a, a concern. Shoot me an email. Whatever it is. Maybe it's a prayer request. Shoot me an email. All right. And allow us to agree with you or reach out to you, whatever it is. Or even a testimony. Shoot me an email. I want to hear from you. Again, that's at moments in the word 99 at gmail.com. If you need prayer, we have our prep line available. 773-785-0412. That's 773-785-0412. Also, we have our online number, which is 708-821-6527. That's 708-821-6527. I cannot wait to hear from you. Also, I want to say God bless you. Hope hope all of you all are Keeping up with us as we do our reading for uh, this month. Today we are in 1 Timothy chapter number 3. That's 1 Timothy, the third chapter. All right. This is where the Apostle Paul gives out the descriptions of a deacon and a bishop. And so I pray that you are there with us in 1 Timothy chapter number 3. Listen, what's a great reading. I pray that it blesses your life for the better. All right. Uh, also, won't you join us on Sunday morning at 930 right here, wherever this stream is coming to you right now, join us Sunday morning at 930 for our live Sunday morning service. Man, listen, if you missed last week, it was off the chain. <laughs> Glory to God. And so I encourage you to not miss this Sunday. Ooh, God has a word that I believe will change and revolutionize your life for the better. And so make sure you tune in right here, whether it's Facebook, Periscope, YouTube, whatever it is you're watching us on right now, tune in for maybe CFFC page, whatever it is, tune in to us live at 930. As they said, it's going to be a Holy Ghost good time. You don't want to miss it. All right, listen, let me give me a few shouts out. I see my mother. Hey, mother, I see you there. Darling, God bless you. Love you, girl. I see you there. Sister Barbara Joe Robinson. Got you, didn't I? I see you. God bless you. Lady Carol, I see you. God bless you. I see you there. Uh, Sister Deborah, God bless you. I see you. Thank God that you're here on tonight. Let me see. Tommy, my main man, what's happening? I see you there. Uh, let me see. Minister Gina Jackson, God bless you. I see you. Sister Gloria, God bless you. Thank you, you make you made it on tonight. Hey, Pastor March, Lady March, I see y'all. God bless you all on tonight. Thank God you all made it in tonight. Let me see who did I miss. I think I got everybody almost. Anyway, uh, those of you who names I did not call, God bless you too. Master Karen, I see you. God bless you. And the rest of you all who are here, we say a great big God bless you all. And thank you all for being a part of tonight's stream. Hey, Brother Reginald Bell. Bless you, man. What's going on? That brother went to school with me. Call you met. Bless your heart. And again, think of all of you all who are meeting in on tonight. Listen, let's pray. Let's dive into tonight's word. Father of heaven, thank you again for this time. We so bless your matchless name for allowing us this opportunity tonight to dig into your word. As always, it is our sincere prayer that you will bless our time together. We bless you. We thank you. We give your name maximum glory. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Family, all right. Listen, tonight we have my special guest tonight. Here he comes in a minute. He'll be up in a second. You know he needs no introduction. The <laughs> bass maestro himself, Brother Larry. Can y'all give it up for him? woo -hoo! All right, there he is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that beautiful introduction, Pastor. Bless your heart. Bass maestro. That sounded pretty good saying it, didn't it? How about I like that? It. I like Bless it. your heart. All right, so y'all, he's on with me tonight. I think this is his first show uh, with me tonight. I believe about eight months ago they did it. 
uh, him and uh, my uh, my oldest daughter and and my oldest son, they did it without me, and we were somewhere relaxing, watching, and uh, <laughs> they just they did so great. You, you all pray that they go on again and give us uh, another four or five days from downtime. All right, if y'all pray, it'll happen. Can the church say amen to that? Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right. Listen. Uh, you're going to do something different tonight. Go to 1 Kings, 1 Kings 17. 1 Kings 17, look at verses 15 and 16. That's 1 Kings, verses 15 and 16. It says, And she went and did according to the sayings of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. All right, you all, we're going back into our series. This is part 14. If you're keeping up, we've been dealing with hanging on to faith. Now, tonight, I'm going to put a twist on it and deal with hanging on to faith in a crisis. <clears throat> hanging on to faith in a crisis. And this, you all, is important because when we look at it from that perspective, you'd be surprised how many folks lose it in a crisis. There are some folks who lose their mind in a crisis, some folks who lose hope in a crisis, some folks become suicidal in a crisis. And I mean, all kinds of things happen in the middle of a crisis. But for the believer, we never lose hope. We never give up. Because our hope is in the Lord. And because our hope is in the Lord, we have to then find ways to hang on to our faith when things uh, don't look so conducive to our liking, when things get hard, if you will, things get rough. And the truth is, sometimes when you just want to flat out quit, we have to find ways to hang on to our faith. Come on, Brother Larry. Jump in at any given time. You jump on in. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, man. You got <laughs> okay. it. Now, now, you're saying, Pastor, that's the same thing. It's the same thing. But when you look at it, in essence, it's really not the same thing. Because uh, when you look at Abraham, Abraham, he hang on the faith. But Abraham was really waiting for the promised child. And so we understand Abraham technically was not in a crisis because if that was a crisis, then he was in a crisis when God first gave him the promise at 75. But Abraham technically was not necessarily in a crisis situation because he was really uh, practicing patience while he was uh, waiting on the manifestation of the promise. But when we talk about crisis, you all, let me give you this for a, a working definition. A crisis here would suggest uh, that there is an emergency situation that requires immediate attention. Let me say that again. A crisis would suggest that there is an emergency that requires immediate attention. That's what's called a crisis. And so here it is. Many of us, you all, before we leave here, will experience a crisis in some form in some shape, in some fashion. The question is this, what do you do when you get into a crisis? And this is where many folks, you all, we we tend to give up on our faith. We lose hope. We cave in. You know, we, we really don't because many times we blame it on God. And we say things like God is responsible for this crisis. Listen, let me say this for, for starters. God is good. God does not, nothing but good. But there's some things you are that God will allow. Hear me. Yeah. There's some things in our life that God will allow because God wants to reveal different facets of Himself to us. Pastor, what you're saying? I'm saying that many of us don't understand the God that heals. Now, we know folks who've been healed. We've heard testimonies of those who have gotten healed. We've read in the Bible of those who received their healing, but we ourselves have never been in that situation where we need our healing. Well, 
when God allows the enemy to attack us in the area of our physical body. Now we get to walk in faith. And when God brings us through, now we have our own testimony of what God is able to do. And understand it is, in fact, that particular testimony where God begins to reveal himself uh, by healing our bodies. And one thing about God giving us revelation or revealing that, or being revealed to us is this, that when God does that, listen, no one can take that from you. Ooh, good job, I'm preaching already. I said, no one can take that from you. Once God has given you a re revelation of who he is, no one can steal that. When God opens door for you and you know God did it, no one can ever steal that from you. When God stands up and fight for you, no one can ever convince you that God is not your banner. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'm saying. Once we have that experience, and many of us, we often run from the experience, but it is in fact the experience is where God then you all gets to reveal himself to us in a whole nother level. Glory to God. Oh, the, working, the working of the trying of the faith. Come on, look, come on now. Jump on in there. Go ahead, you got it, man. You, I, I'll chime in every time and again. You get <laughs> the Bible says the trying of our faith yeah. Yeah. working patience. Yeah. And so that's vital for the believer that what we're being tried by is what the enemy attacks us with. It's testing our faith. It is building up our patience. It is helping out our endurance. And so listen, since we have to go through, we must then understand that even in a crisis situation, God is always there. Amen. We're questioning, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Come on. There are some things that happen in our lives that don't come with a manual. <laughs> Glory to God. And so when you don't know what to do, one of the things we need to know and understand is that we can always call on the Lord God. The Bible says that we can call on the name of God and run to him and we'll be safe. Oh, can you imagine being in trouble? The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous, that's you and I, we run to him and they are safe. Come on, son. Jump in. So, all right, I'm gonna jump in right here. This is <laughs> so it, it, it amazes me how like we uh just put our trust and in, in man-made things or man things before we we put it in God. Like for instance, like cool, you go hop on the plane, you don't know who the pilot is, what the pilot then did uh the night before, a couple hours before, but you go hop on that pain, uh, plane and you put all your trust in, in this pilot. Mm -hmm. Before you like bless the plan, like God, get us here safely, protect us on the way there, black, God, his mind, God, everything. And it's just, I mean, you can go through so many situations. Right. Yeah. It's just like we, it, it, God is, it, when, when we're going through certain situations, at times we can just put God to the back burner instead of him being uh, in the forefront and seeking him first uh, for, for, for help through the, through the situation that we're going through. Right. That's absolutely correct. And here, and what you say is so true. I'm amazed by how many people put more trust in things mm -hmm. than they do God. Right. When in fact, I don't care what you're driving, flying, whatever it is. If your trust, if our confidence is not in God, then our trust really is in vain. As a matter of fact, the Bible says this: to not put our confidence in man. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm gonna add to it: don't put your confidence in anything that is man-made. Because uh, I realize anything that is man-made can Found. fall apart. Yep. <laughs> you know? And so our trust in and confidence has to be in God. Right. You know, as I was thinking about this lesson, uh, one of the things I noticed was a pattern of the devil. You know, I often say, me and that boy, we kind of, you know, know each other. And so uh, I, 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 I realize a pattern of the devil. And the pattern is this that he always seemed to intensify his attack on a greater level right when I'm on the precipice of my greatest breakthrough. Oh, absolutely. Something about kept it. I said he will intensify yeah, his attack right when you're on the precipice, on the edge 
of your greatest breakthrough. Wow. And so Pastor Larry then, so what does that mean? That means then that there's there's something we will have to go through that will be a deal breaker or having a deal breaker moment. Pastor, what we may have a, a, a deal breaker moment. Listen, there are some things that either make you or break you. You yeah. see, let me give you an example. You know, uh, Larry, uh, Job. Let, let's look at Job for a second. Okay. Here it is. Job, the Bible says, was a perfect and an upright man. Upright right? man. The Bible said he uh, he did good. He eschewed evil, which means he just shunned evil. And here it is. All kind of stuff broke out in Job's life. Now, here it is, his wife. And this is the part that, that, that really made me laugh the hardest. Here it is, when times were good, she was enjoying all the benefits and all the good things that God did for her and her husband. But as soon as the boils broke out, as soon as Job, life got turned upside down, the kids died, the cattle died. She he told him to was, turn your back on your God. Oh, yes, it did. <laughs> Listen, he said, he said, woman, uh, she said, Job, curse God and die. Now, and I'm like, wait a minute. That right there was what I call a make or break moment. Yeah. Right there was the deal breaker. Because what if, consider this, what if Job had a cursed God? We'd never see all the benefits that he got for, for trusting exactly. and believing him. Yeah. It, you are you are preaching tonight. Come on, son. <laughs> See, watch this. Job would have never seen the double. Yeah. Job received double for his trouble, but Job would have never got to experience God's overflow in his life mm -hmm. had he followed the instructions of someone, as Sister the Gloria saying, who wasn't as committed to God as Job was. Right. You see, because it's not that she didn't know of God, because Job worshiped God. And I'm sure she's seen it and she was right there with him, praising yeah, yeah, him for everything, all the blessings that she that, that they were getting as a result. But but right. the, the moment that trouble hit, she it's like she forgot about everything. Like the what, what have you done for me lately? You forget about Ooh. all the good stuff that he's done, and you turn like, Oh, what was me? Turn your back on God, he ain't do nothing for us. I know, right? I thought God was <laughs> there. But you know, don't let me tell you something. I see the same pattern in today's church, the same pattern, because the moment something doesn't go right, the moment you hit a, a snail's pace, the moment uh, you hit a bump in the road, the moment we hit a, a pothole, the first the first thing people would usually do is abandon God. You know, t tell me something. Why do you believe people abandon God the moment they hit a rough place? It's, I guess it's, it's it's the easy thing to do, uh, just because like you know you put you 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 believe in God and you trust in God when when the when it's when the going is good, and it's like okay cool well like I, I'm putting my trust especially like certain situations like okay cool God well get me through this get me through this and like we we're saying it's it's the trying of your your faith you know it's like I, your faith has your faith has to be tried to know God on a certain level. And so when you put your faith into him, it's like, okay, well, I put my faith in you and then this didn't come to pass. So you obviously the reason why this happened. And so that's the first person that they get to blame instead of like, you know, like blaming themselves or uh, not trusting like the process. Oh, let, me, let me go. I like that because that's the reality. If we don't trust the process because God has a plan and there is a process. But you know what? I, I realize you, you never know what God can do and what God can bring you out of until you've right. been through something. Yeah. To know God at that level. Like I That's can know cool. him, like, like you, you said plenty of times, I can know him for, for my knee hurting. Believe me, he healed my knee. All right, we good. I know God to, to heal, heal my, like to bless me financially. He blessed me financially. But then like when you, when your house is going to foreclosure and then like, okay, is your faith great enough to believe God at this level? You don't know unless you unless you put your faith in them, unless you yes. unless you meet meet at that situation. And you know what? Uh, as you were talking, I realized people don't get it. While the situation changes, God didn't change. Right. See, and I was saying yesterday, today, and forevermore. You better come on. You better come <laughs> on. You better here. And so you know, if if God then is not changing, 
why then are we who say we are believers, why are we changing when we serve a God that does not change? Right. You know, uh, over in the book of Psalms, he says, my word that goes forth out of my mouth, I, I don't alter. God mm -hmm. says he does not alter the word that goes forth out of his mouth. And so if God does not alter what he's already said, then everything God has said, God says, I've done. And I can bring to pass what I've said. All you right. see, but what God really needs is somebody to believe him. You know, I, 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 I love asking this question. What if the unbeliever is watching you? And they want to mm -hmm. see how you as a Christian, how are you handling that situation? My question is always this. What would they see? You know, will they see us run from the battle? Right. Will they see us curse God and die? Mm -hmm. You know, will they see us complain and, you know, whine about everything that's going on. And, you know, uh, in this age of cry a lot, you know, <laughs> <it's quite> a <laughs> lot. <laughs> you know, we cry about every little, bless God, thing that happens in our world. And, you know, it's like we think that everything is going to be, you know, butter smooth. All and, the time. You know, and I, I wish I could say it will be, you know, but I think I said uh, on Wednesday night, here, here is the truth. Stuff happens. No. Stuff happens. And so the question becomes then, what do we do when uh, we hit a snag in a row? Our, our life uh, hits a crisis. And this is what I want us to see here in this text. Because when we look here in this text, they're in a major crisis. I mean, oh, dear God. But, Larry, here's the funny part. The crisis was created by the man in the crisis. <laughs> right. right. Here it is. Huh? Go ahead. I was like, the, by the man who, who, who blessed him. That's or right. Gave him the commandment. So go ahead. Go ahead. Right. Here it is. Elijah was the one who told uh, Ahab the king, he said, it's not going to rain nor do. That's right. Yeah. At my word. Now, come on. First of all, that's a bad dude. Mm -hmm. Any, anybody who said it's not going to rain or do anything until I say so. That's a hey, look. As far as I'm concerned, that's a bad dude. That's the first thing I saw in this text. It took some faith yeah. to open your mouth and watch this. Tell the king something that God did not tell him to say. All right. Now, that part caught me. It, it really grasped my attention. That God did not say, Elijah, tell King Ahab that it's mm -hmm. not going to rain. Elijah was frustrated right. because of the wickedness in that nation. Mm -hmm. He said, because of what y'all doing, it won't rain and it won't be any, any do anywhere because, uh, I'm sorry, until I say so. It shows the power of the words. It shows the power of the words. That's right. And it, and it kind of reminds me of too, uh, your favorite boxer. Like when he told me, hell, I mean, it's going to last three rounds and you're going to be knocked out in three rounds. That's right. That's right. <laughs> My man, man, Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Yep. He said, you're going to go in the four. In three, <laughs> you're going to bring your knee. On two, <laughs> you're going to be through. <laughs> On, so, but see, what people didn't understand was he was releasing words out of his mouth. Yep. This is one of the things I really want, want us to catch that I've been dealing with for the last few uh, days or so. Because my question is, how many times have we released words out of our mouth, but we thought about what we said and the unlikely possibility of it coming to pass. And so we stopped standing on what we said. Yep. Oh, dear God. Here is the reality that anything I can get for myself, I try to do myself. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, I, need, you don't need to trust God for Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So what do we do when uh, we're asking God for the impossible? Okay. When we're asking God to do the impossible for us? Are we still standing? You know, one of the things I generally uh, call this is the choking point. Because right here is where we sink or swim. Right? right. We, make it, we don't make it. Right? But consider this. The question is this. Do I depend on my ability? 
or do I depend on God's ability? You know, listen, all the stuff I've been through, man, listen, I, I, I've got positive proof that God can do the impossible. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I said, I've got positive proof that God knows how to do the impossible. As a matter of fact, I need 20 yards in the chat room. Put in the chat room, God can do the impossible. Come on. God can do the impossible. Right. God, listen, God can do the impossible. Yeah. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to let you give him the scripture over in Ephesians 3.20. Tell him what it say. Read. <laughs> Uh, so Ephesians 3.20, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, exceeding, sorry, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Now, come on. Give me something on, uh, on that text, sir. Now, it, it sounds good, and it's a good preaching point. But to the everyday uh, uh, person who don't go to church and don't, 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 don't know all the church vernacular, uh, what does that mean? Back. So, so essentially, like he, he's able to do exceeding abundantly above what we can ask or think. So cool, and we could just we can keep it in layman's terms. So if I come to you and I ask for a hundred dollars, like okay, cool, you can give me a hundred dollars, but my guy who can do exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or think, he's like okay, you asked for a hundred dollars, but this is what I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you ten thousand dollars. And, and just because I'm doing exceeding abundantly what you ask or think, and it's, it's only him that can do it, not you or not me, because obviously I'm asking you for money. So obviously I can't do it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's, that's, that's kind of breaking it down in that way. No, no, your, your point is valid, because consider this. If I only ask 400, mm -hmm. isn't it safe to say that the reason I stayed with 100 because I only I had $100 faith? Yeah. Yeah. And I only believe God at that level. Now, yeah. here is the, uh, I'm going to do a, 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 a term we use in checkers or chess, stalemate. Here is where many of us come to a stalemate because when we look at where we are and we judge God's ability based on how fast he's moving, mm -hmm. the devil makes us believe that God has stalled, you see? But the text says above that which we can ask, which means even in my articulation, my mind can't articulate the real thing I want to ask God. Right. And so he says above I can ask or think, which means then, oh, dear God, this is a whole different lesson here. So I have to find ways to ask God on a different level. Mm -hmm. Because when I pray, I have to be willing to look over into the word of God. And this is why I always say that when you pray, first of all, open your eyes and get your Bible. Get in the word. Look at it and find out what is the word saying. Because when I go into the word of God and see what God is saying, my prayer is not based on how I feel. It's not based on uh, my uh, ability when I look into the word of God it is simply I am praying a prayer based solely on what the word of God has promised me right. and so when I do that now it's above that which I can ask or think right. because here's the reality there's some stuff in the word of God I don't think to ask for <laughs> come on I want to but my mind can't fathom that because in my natural it looks impossible. Impossible, yep. You know, but when I look into the word of God, if God says then I have a right to it, then bless God, I should go after it. Now, look at it again here over in the CEV translation. Watch this. Uh, Larry, read re re right here. The CEV uh, translation. It says, it says? I, pr I pray that Christ Jesus and the church will forever bring praise to God. His power at work in us can do far more than we dare ask or imagine. Amen. Y'all catch that? Did y'all catch that? That he can do far more, far more than you can dare. Come on, when I was growing up, we had a thing called a double dare you. Come on. <laughs> the best one hit my hand, whatever it was. Listen, I wonder how many brave saints do we have 
who said, I'm going to ask God for some stuff that looks absolutely impossible for my life. Yeah. Oh, dear God. Because when I do that, what you're really doing is really you are uh, uh, glorifying God. Because you're telling God, I know that you carry the capacity right. to do this. And because I know what you can do, I'm going to ask you to do it anyway. Man, right. that's a compliment. I, yeah. <laughs> and so tonight, I want to uh, let's walk through these five levels of faith. All right, five levels of faith that I believe every believer needs to have in order to live and enjoy the favor of God in their lives. I hope y'all caught that. I said the five levels of faith that every believer needs to have in order to live in and enjoy the favor of God in their lives. All right, uh, number one, you need faith to obey God. That's number good. two, you need faith to receive from God. Number three, you need faith to follow God. Number four, you need faith to release what God has for you. Number five, you also need faith, watch this now, to enjoy what God has given you. Oh, I pray y'all got that. I'm going to say it again. You need faith to obey. You need faith to receive. You need faith to follow. You need faith to release. And you need faith to enjoy. Now, let's dig, let's dig into this right quick. Come on. Let's start here, uh, Larry, with number one, uh, faith to obey. Yeah. What does I that think mean? O o obedience and, and, and faith go hand in hand to me. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's just because you can't have faith and or you can't obey without having faith. Uh, okay. We can go through several scriptures, but I'll read the, the first one that you have. So it says you're going to need faith to believe that God will give you what to do in a crisis. Yes. Say that again. <laughs> you're going to need faith to believe that God will give you what to do in a crisis. Now, that's critical. Yeah. You have to believe that God will give you what to do in a crisis. Because sometimes we get, we panic, we freak out, we fall apart. No, I tell God, you need to have faith to believe that no matter where I am, no matter what I'm going through, that God will give me the faith, that I got the faith to believe that God will give me what to do. In this crisis, now, uh, Larry, give them um, that, that, uh, our text there and John. Give me one second. So the John sixteen verse thirteen, how be it when uh, when he the Spirit of Truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Oh, did y'all hear that? Now, don't miss this, you all. He says, he will guide you and he will show you. Oh, come on, class. He will guide you and he will show you. I'm going to say it again. He will guide you and will show you. Which means then, when you and I, as his children, put our reliance on Holy Spirit, his job is to guide us and to show us, Pastor, what does that mean? He will lead us and guide us, but then he will show us things that are coming our way. Yeah. Let me see if I can say it like this. When the enemy wants to tear your life apart, he will show you the enemy's plan and give you a way around it. Watch this before the enemy catches you up in the trap. And so our job then is to make sure we're in position to hear God's voice. And be willing to obey what he says. Why? So that we can avoid the trap. Exactly. Because many of us are trapped because we don't hear. Yeah. But the Bible says over in uh, uh, Revelations, it said, he that have an ear, let him yeah. hear. Let him hear. Jesus said in Matthew, he says, my sheep, they hear my voice. And Absolutely. watch this. And they know me. And, and the, the perfect key. A perfect example of this is is uh, the the story of Jonah. 
Uh, okay. when, when God told him to go down to Nineveh. And he, just, he said, well, I, I ain't going. <laughs> like, you know, he so he 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 got the word of, of what to do, but he decided not to obey. Right. And when he decided not to obey, that's why he ran. He ran his own self into that situation of being in the belly of the well uh, because of his lack of obedience. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, see, you don't pull open a whole can of worms there. <laughs> Because see, see, if I asked how many Christians have gotten themselves in trouble yeah. because they wouldn't obey God, I guarantee yeah. you every hand in the chat room oh, was absolutely. Blood. Because we have all found ourselves uh, in a place where we heard Holy Spirit talk to us, but we did things our way instead of doing what Holy Spirit told us to do. Yep. You know, <laughs> so, you know, and look, I'm the first one to testify. Yep. I got myself in trouble over there. <laughs> yep. Over here, too. Yep. Over here, I got here because of what I wouldn't obey. And listen, if I wouldn't have did this, that wouldn't have happened. Woo, good God Almighty. Yep. Hey, look, if I was in church, I would say, touch your neighbor and tell them, say, I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, glory to God. But it, it, it's the truth. And so, Jesus says, my sheep, they hear my voice and they know me. And see, one of the things I realized about God, God does not take us by the collar and say, come here. He says, I'm going to talk to you. Right. I uh, gave a story some time ago about the gentleman who had a daughter who wouldn't follow his instructions. And uh, after she didn't follow his instructions, he took a, 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 a belt and gave her you know, a little paddle. And then when he finished thanking her, he felt bad about it. And the wife asked him and says, why do you feel bad? He said, because I would have loved to have guided her with my words instead of my hand. Right. And this is where many Christians, we end up getting the hand of God instead of following the word of God. Right. You see, if we allow God to follow to, to guide us with his words, then we never have to experience his hand as That's far as rebuke and chastisement. You see, and even though chastisement really isn't bad because the Bible said, whom we love, we chasten or chastise. And so the fact that God chastises us tells us that God's mm -hmm. committed to us and he loves us. Right. But listen, I'm the first one to tell you, you don't want to have God chastise you because, uh, when God give you a beat down, it hurt. <laughs> show, me, show me that you love me a different way. I know that's right. <laughs> hey, I know that's right. God, show me something else. And this ain't cool. <laughs> but now, look over here uh, in Psalm 147.5. Over in Psalm 147.5, it says, Great is our Lord, and of great power, his understanding is infinite. Now, that says volumes. It says, great is our Lord, great is his power, and his understanding, watch this, is infinite. throughout. It's infinite. Mm -hmm. Never ends. Yeah. Over in the can't, ERV, it says, it. exactly. Yeah. You know, over, over in the ERV, it says, our Lord is great and powerful. There is no limit to what he knows. Which means, then, that God is smarter than a fifth grader. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. I mean, God knows far more than you and I. And so uh, what it means for us then is that we have to know that it's important that knowing that God's will always gives us what to do. Yeah. God will always give us what to do in a crisis, you know. And so uh, write this down. God knows where your provision is. This is crucial. That's good. God knows where your our provision is. Pastor, where was that in the text? Well, let, let, let's look at, look at verse 3. It says, God told uh, Elijah, he says, get thee hence and turn the eastward and hide thyself by the brook Sherith that is before Jordan. Look at verse 4. And it shall be that, watch this, thou shalt drink from the brook, 
And I have commanded the raven to feed thee there. Yeah. Now, here's something I want you to see. Don't miss this. God kept enough provision for his servant. Man, that'll preach right there. Yeah. I say God kept enough provision for his servant. Remember now, it was a drought, right? It was a drought. They had no water. Remember that if there's no water, the livestock can't eat. I'm sorry, drink. Can't drink. If, there, if there's no grass or no water, the grass can't grow. Which mm -hmm. means the livestock can't eat, and then they're going to die. The whole place is like, is like a, a waste area, a, a, a desert. It's a desert, yeah. Yet, God found a way to keep provision hidden for his servant. Yeah, absolutely. Which tells me that no matter what they cry shortage on, God has provision hidden for his children. Ooh, somebody on the put in the chat room that God has something hidden for me. Come on. God knows how to hide our provision. You listen, you're running, try, try, get in line, talking about, oh dear God, I better get some gas before all the gas is gone. <laughs> think about it. Yeah. You think God did not know that it was going to be a gas shortage? Come on. Come yeah. on. God put enough provision yeah. to fill up. If everybody, if everyone on the earth had five cars, God had more than enough provision for every car to be on full every day. That's the kind of God we serve. You see? And so, but the part I like is that God said, God said, I'm the one with, with provision. You know, God said, I hid it for you. Watch this in a special place. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I'm going to cause you to leave here, put you over in a region where, watch this, that while they're experiencing the, the drought, I'm going to give you enough to drink mm -hmm. that will sustain you. And so, you know, I often ask the question, how many of us can testify that God has kept us with provision during this season? Amen. I mean, many of us, God has kept us in this season. I mean, when we thought everything would fall apart and things were shut down, God found a way to make sure we had more than enough. Amen. That's the part I love about God. Go ahead. Something you got to say? No, but if you, I mean, it, I mean, it all ties back uh, with, with the verse three and verse four when, when God told him to go eastward. I mean, it, it just ties back into that obedience factor because if he, if he decided to go west, thinking that he was smart, smart, I was smart God or thought, thought that his way was better, you know, he, he wouldn't have been, he wouldn't, have, he wouldn't have ran into that provision. Oh, come on now. So, so yeah, it just, it just all ties back in together. And now you, now you know that's a preaching point right there, <laughs> because sometimes folk go the other way, yeah. uh, like uh, what's that boy name? Like Lot. <laughs> Say Lot got himself in a lot of trouble because <laughs> Lot went the wrong direction. Right. He went towards Sodom, and hey, well, yeah. you all know the story. But see, when you read over in Isaiah 35 and verse six. God says, then shall the lame man leap as in hurt or heart and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness, he says, for in the wilderness shall waters break out and, the and streams in the desert. Yeah. What does that mean? God says, I will give you rivers or water in dry places. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because God always has a reservoir, yeah. some place for his children. And this is what I love so much about God, that God always has a reservoir just for us. Yeah. We never have to get in panic mode because God always has a reservoir for his children. That's exactly what we need. That's right. And so, but Larry, look ahead on in the B part of verse four. Bible says, the ravens to feed them there. Now, come on, help me out there. Why would God send a, a, a dirty bird, an unclean bird, to feed Elijah? 
because this pulled us really into our second point, the faith to receive. Right. Because he didn't have to take the food from the bird. Yeah. And so, in other words, what I'm saying is that you need faith to receive when God brings the blessing, watch this now, from an unusual source. Yeah, common things. Yep. We look we look for the blessing from like, okay, I know this person can bless me with what I need. But nope, God got this this person right over here. This this is how I want to bless you. Come on. Yeah. You know, why what do we what do we pick and choose who God blesses us through? Right. Help me out. Well, why is that? How come God can't pick who he, who he wants to pick to bless us? I mean, he can, and that's that's absolutely like what you see in the scripture, what he does. Uh it's just it's it's because that's that's what we're looking for. That's how that's what our, our mind can imagine. That's that's as far as we can as far as we can think. Like, you know, like you said, yeah, he'll he'll do uh far more than we can a ask or think. See them bunny above all we can ask or think. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I think that this person can do it right here, but God, hey, the blessing to come from somewhere else. Ooh, hey, and that's just like God. Yeah. God knows how to give us blessings from unexpected places, unexpected yeah. people, and from an unexpected avenue. Can, can consider this: a, a raven is a is a dirty bird. Yeah. This is a, this is a, 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 a vulture. Mm -hmm. what, what what these birds do is go and they find the uh, uh, the carcasses of dead animals, and generally by the time they get the food. It's already rotten, it had bugs on it. <laughs> but isn't it amazing? Because see, when I considered the hand of God, what God did was God reserved an animal, let him die at the right time. So when the raven got there, the animal was still fresh. Mm -hmm. So when he pulled the flesh from the animal, he brought that fresh meat to Elijah. Right. And so now Elijah gets to eat Fresh steaks, fresh pork chop, fresh tenderloin. <laughs> Come on. That boy gets some fresh lamb chops. Every time he ate, he ate fresh. Yeah. Because God made sure the bird brought him fresh. Can you imagine? Here it is. This dude, uh, this bird is bringing Elijah uh, fresh bread. Yeah. Come on. My question is, where the bread come from? Right. And the drought. You know, if there's a drought, that means. <laughs> God then had to give the baker or some mother some water to bake some bread. She put the bread out, and the bird came and stole the bread. Right. Why? Because God wanted to feed Elijah. <laughs> See, yeah, other plans with it. Exactly. Which listen for us to be an encouragement, which means that God will do whatever it takes to make sure you and I get provision. Amen. Ooh, somebody ought to catch that. I said God will do. Whatever it takes to make sure you and I get provision. And, you know, another thing I saw is that God can take something that is unclean and clean it. And make it clean, it, yeah. That's right, when it fits his purpose. Yeah. And you imagine he's a buzzard, and God said, I'm going to clean you. So you can get some food for my servant. This way, he won't turn it down because I'm going to clean you. You don't get some clean food. And now I'm going to do it for my glory. That's good. Ooh, good That's God good. Almighty. And now look at, at verse 5. It says, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For for he went and dwelt by the brook, uh, the brook sheriff that was before Jordan. And the ravens bought him bread and flesh in the morning and, and bread and flesh in the evening. This dude was getting two meals a day. Oh dear God, he was eating twice a day. No wonder he gained weight. He was eating. <laughs> <laughs> he was eating like a pig. Right. But now watch this. Right here though is where he needed faith to follow. Right? He needed faith to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, let me tell us what does that mean having faith to follow. It says you're gonna need faith to follow. Uh, you're gonna need the boldness to follow the instruction God gives to you. You listen, he needed the boldness to follow. Pastor, what does that mean? Simply saying this God can give you an instruction, but if you don't have the faith or the boldness to obey, then all you got was some instructions. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, amen. Let me see if I can print this up for you on the shelf. I can give you a box of Duncan Hines. They will give you the instructions. If you don't read them and follow the instructions, and you put the whole box in the oven, what you're going to have is a fire. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear God, you are going to have a mess oh, on your man. hand. Yeah. And many of us, we hear what God says, but because of the impossibility or the unlikelihood of it happening, we, you know, we 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 we, we generally run it by somebody else. Well, right. let me ask somebody else. You think God? You you think I should obey God? Wait a minute. If God said do it, why in the world am I asking you to do what God told me to do? Exactly. Come exactly. on, son. It's just too many hands in the kitchen with that. Huh? Just, like, as I said, it's too it's too many hands in the kitchen. Exactly. Like, like why, why are you putting your your faith and your trust and and man after God had already given you the instructions on how to get to your expected end? That's true. Yeah. Here, no, 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 Larry, no, here's the reality. I believe all of us have questioned God's instructions. Absolutely. Uh, all of us have because many times when God gives us instructions, we don't always see it from God's perspective. We often see God's instructions from our perspective, right? Because uh, um, if you want to try to figure out how is God going to work this thing out, you know? Okay, God, you said do X, Y, Z. Uh, let's use tithing as an ex uh, example. We know God's uh, tithing is giving God ten percent of what God blesses us with, right. and you know, first of all, God's the one who blesses us, mm -hmm. and He says, "Give me ten percent of what I've given to you." plus an offering, right? And so we look at that and we wonder, how can God give me more than what I've given him? And I'm amazed how we forget the part that God gave it to us in the first place. Yeah. You know? And the devil makes that, I tell you what, sometimes, boy, our dime can get so big. Oh, dear God. <laughs> you know? But isn't it amazing? Be bad at all those times it does. Man, I, you know what though? <laughs> but Larry, watch it though. Here's the part that I, uh, other day I realized: the dime is the smallest coin mm -hmm. in our denomination. Size-wise, yes. Size-wise, right? Yeah. Yeah. A penny in diameter, one cent, is bigger than ten. Yet the ten, the the the, the, the dime, the coin, is smaller than the penny and smaller than the nickel. And yet, the quarter. Right, yeah, right, in the quarter. <laughs> yet the devil makes the dime look yeah. bigger than the dollar. Yeah. yeah. Oh, isn't that amazing? Yeah. And so and, and tying it back into the scripture, like so if again, like if, if she'd have just told if she'd have told Elijah like, hey look, this is all I got. Like I'm not gonna give you the first of what I have made for me and my son for us to eat and live off that until we die. Like, look, look at the blessing that she missed out. Like, if you go back down in the scripture, it says, and, and their barrel, the, their meal was full. Like, right, they never right. ran out. They didn't go dry because right, right. they gave it to the man of God first. Right, right. They gave it to, they followed the instruction. Yeah. Because in order for us to prosper and be uh, in position for God to do what he says in our lives, we have to be willing to do what God says. All right. Man, listen, our time is all gone. I'm going to give you tonight. Tonight, I'm going to give you closing arguments. I'm, I'm sorry. Our closing <laughs> statement. Come on. Our right, closing statement. All right. I mean, it, it's uh, we, we've gone over so many times. It's just put your trust in God. Like uh, Follow his instructions. Obey his instructions. And, and just, just keep your faith in him. And you know, you 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 you're gonna get to that expected end. Like mm -hmm. God knows, like it, it says in the Bible, and I'm not sure where, so don't don't quote me, but uh <laughs> he does say that he 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 wrote he knows the beginning and the end, he's the author and finisher of our faith. Mm -hmm. Like so he he knows he 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 has the expected end already. All things That's work together for our good and, and just on, the now. question is is gonna make it we're gonna we're gonna be all right. Hey, you put about ten of them back to back. 
<laughs> the first one is Isaiah 46 and 10. All right, there you go. I know you knew where it was. Not declaring the end for no again. <laughs> then we have Romans 8.28, that all yep, things yep, work for me for good. And so that's the reality. Yes. We have to put our trust in God. You can't get any plan than that. We must, we have to put our trust in God because when we do, listen, we're giving, that's the highest honor yeah. we can give God. When we tell God, I'm putting all of my trust in you, and whatever God you say to do, that's what I'm going to do. Right. Man, for God, that says volume. God said, now I can trust you with some more. All right, son, come on. Put this out. You know how to do it? I wanted to say a prayer. But... <laughs> That's fine. Come on. You, 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 pray, you pray us out. <laughs> All right, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time uh, together and uh, getting into your word and, and learning more on how to trust you and to obey you, God. Give us the confidence to, uh, to obey what you tell us to do, to uh, keep our faith in you. Let us use the examples uh, that we find throughout the word uh, to just come to you first, seek you first and acknowledge you in all our ways and, and, and that you would direct our path, God. Uh, just just be with us in, in all our ways and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, can y'all give my, my my son a great big hand? Come on. And John and John Renite, come on. I say, you ain't clapping. Amen. That's right. You, you ain't clapping. I'm watching you. Oh, no. I mean you. <laughs> thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right, y'all, listen. As we always say, we will have the God kind of faith. We call those things that be not as though they were. And the one thing we know that God has us in the palm of his hand. I pray God's peace and divine protection over you, your family, and those who are attached to your life. We pray God keep you in tonight, give you sweet rest. We lift myself, Lady Carol, our entire team tonight that made this happen. Our, our partners, God bless all of you all. If this lesson has been a blessing to you, consider sowing a generous seed. All right? They'll put our apps up there on the screen for you. All right? If God is teaching, if God is uh, urging you to sow a seed, obey God. All right, y'all. Love you. Come on. Big hugs. Come on, everybody. Come on. Big hugs. Come on. Come on, Grant. Come on. Mm -mm. All right, y'all. Love y'all. You know how we do it. We are, come on, you know it, say it, out of here.